Hey everyone, this is Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware. We can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. If you remember my video on using a DC power supply to power a electrolysis tank, you know that it turned out to be a great success. But I thought, let's go ahead and go this one step further. So let's power an electrolysis tank with two of them. So we're going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has chosen to purchase my product, Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning. The purchase of this product helps keep this channel going, and I just want to say thank you so very much. So let's get on into the video. I'll leave a link to the video that I mentioned just a minute ago at the top of the screen. But the one DC power supply at 10 ounce worked really great. So we decided to hook two of these up and just see what kind of difference it makes. So we're going to bump it up a notch. Now this video is not a video on how to put together an electrolysis tank. Hopefully I'll get to do one of those in the near future. It's mainly about using a DC power supply and whether or not two will make a huge difference in the process. So let's go down into my shop and we will check it out. Okay, I apologize for the lighting. I didn't bring extra lights down here. All I have was the light mounted on my camera. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and just use that. I think it's gonna be fine. Before we get started, I'd like to answer a question that I had on the previous video. Someone said, what's going on with the crucifix in the background? And I thought I'd just share that with you really quickly. When I was adding on to my shop, I let my kids play with chalk. And this is kind of the leftover. We have, looks like wind right there. And then of course we have a cross. And then we have three crosses. If you look really closely, you've got my daughter's name, Lindsay, and then she spelled it again. But you know, my kids, they were young, and this is the last remnant of the chalk art from when they were kids. Because this part was under the roof and wasn't washed away. All the other chalk art has totally disappeared. So there's nothing weird or nothing crazy about it. It's just something that my kids were, you know, being artistic. So they were not drawing things like monsters and blood and gore, but they were drawing things that they learned in Sunday school. And it's just a great reminder from when my kids were kids. Uh, they're not kids for long and you need to hang on to those reminders. So let's get on to the rest of the video. Okay, I have them set up right beside each other and I've got the cables. And if you would like to order any of these, I'm gonna leave an affiliate link to Amazon. I have a little bit heavier duty cables for these. And we're going to take this unmarked Wagner cornbread. Actually, I think it's marked. We'll find out when we get it clean. So first of all, we're just going to hook it and submerge it. We're going to go ahead and hook our black lead to our cast iron and our positive lead to our tank. So we're gonna fire it up and see what kind of action we have. We have 9.96 amps at 10.5 volts. Okay, we're starting to get a little bit of action. off the top. And if I let this run all night, it's probably going to do just fine. But let's go ahead and hook up second lead to it. So let's cut off our power. Hook us up another lead to our metal, to our cast iron. Take a look. Okay, we have 9.96 amps, 18.2 volts, 18.3 volts. But let's look at our action. Oh yeah, we are really cooking right now. Thank you. 
Oh yeah, we got double. So let's go back. We'll switch one off and see if we see a drop. It's a little bit of a drop. Now let's switch back on. Oh yeah, we have double action. Oh yeah, we're boiling now. You can't even see the pan. It's boiling so strong. Well, I can say this, it is working great. Uh, according to the numbers, I'm running about twice as much power as I would be if I was only running one. So technically I should get twice as much done for the same amount of time. And I'm excited about that because I'm used to 40 amps. So now I'm halfway there. I have almost 20 amps going and that's really good. So I'm really excited about it and I think it's going to turn out great. By the way, I have a 15 amp breaker and it's not showing any signs of breaking. I even added my studio light to this because my key light went dead. So there is a little bit on this particular circuit. Now, if you have, you know, a, a fuse box or something that may be older, it may possibly blow a fuse. But at this point, I'm running two of them on a 15 amp breaker without any problems. You know, if I get my hands on another one of these, I might just try three. I'd really be curious about that one. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. You can also check out Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. Uh, it's a great group full of people who really love cast iron and love sharing. You can also sign up to receive emails from Cast Iron Cookware periodically. Sometimes they go about a month apart, sometimes a little more. I'll also leave a link in the video description below to all of these sites and also the DC power supply and the heavier duty cables. And I just want to say thank you again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, it says, now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. And to him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. I just want to say, share the word and be a blessing.